Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY and I am here to show you guys how to install our new trigger position sensor on your Classic Mini so you can either support full fuel injection or a mappable ignition system. So stay tuned for that. All right, like I said, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install our new trigger position sensor. This is a kit that we specially built and I believe is the best kit on the market for adding a mappable ignition or the support for a complete fuel injection system to your Classic Mini. This can be retrofitted on any Classic Mini engine. It supports all the different pulleys throughout the years and will allow you to add a trigger sensor so that your ECU will be able to read where your crankshaft is at any given time. This is a 36-1 trigger position sensor. That means there are 36 teeth with one missing on this trigger wheel. This gets mounted to your crank pulley, which is right here. We've got one for our little demonstration here. And then you have your trigger position sensor, which in our kit is a Hall effect sensor. This is a digital sensor, which in my opinion is the most reliable type of sensor for your trigger position system. Now, there are other sensors like a Reluctor style sensor, which work all right, but the Hall effect sensor gives you a little bit more flexibility and is a little bit more resilient to mounting imperfections and distances and all of those different things. So this sensor, the wire connector, the trigger wheel itself with the missing tooth, your mounting bracket here, as well as the mounting brackets here all come in our kit allow you to mount this to your engine. Now, why might you want a trigger position sensor for your Classic Mini? Well, there's two primary scenarios where you might want to install something like this on your car. The first, of course, is obviously fuel injection. This is a crucial part of operating an ECU in your car because your ECU needs to know where your engine is in its rotational cycle as it's running to properly fire those injectors, but also to fire your ignition at the correct time. Now, the second system is a little bit simpler. It is a mappable ignition system. What that means is an ECU that is there to control only when your spark plugs are firing. So you would still have a carburetor on your Classic Mini's A-Series engine, but you would remove the distributor and introduce a simple ECU to manage only when those spark plugs fire. And that system also needs to know where your crankshaft is in its rotational cycle in order to fire those correctly. That is a really popular modification for people who are looking for a lot more refined power out of their Classic Mini, but don't necessarily wanna swap all the way to fuel injection. Or you might be in a race class that doesn't support fuel injection or doesn't allow you to do that. So go ahead and step over here and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how this kit gets installed and how you might install it on your Classic Mini. Okay, so. Some of you might know already that we carry a wide variety of throttle body systems to support various different kinds of fuel injection, both a drive-by-wire setup like the one you see here and a cable-driven system depending on what you want on your Classic Mini. Now, in order to support this stuff and make it more approachable and easier to do for more people, we wanted to introduce a trigger system. Now, this trigger system is made to fit on any A-series engine with any type of pulley. This is because we really wanted to focus on being able to support as many engines as possible, whether you have an early style engine or a later engine that you might be converting to a modern injection system. Now to start off, the kit is pretty simple, but comes with some very key items. The first thing I wanna show you guys is our mounting bracket. So this is our little bracket here. This comes with all of the little Allen key bolts that you need, as well as it's machined to fit in the keyway on your pulley. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this is an example of a classic mini pulley. And if you look inside this pulley here, you can see that keyway. 
Now the idea is that with your Mini's engine, you'll be able to remove the pulley bolt that mounts this pulley on your crankshaft. You're gonna take your mounting bracket here, connect it in, notch it into place in that pulley, and you can see that mounts up beautifully right inside there, and then you simply replace your pulley bolt right on top of this. Now, what that does is this locks it into place with that little keyway, and then you simply are going to add your trigger wheel to this pulley. Now, mounting the trigger wheel itself couldn't be simpler. It is something we recommend doing after it is on the pulley and on your engine, but what it will do is mount directly into this face here. It's a, simply a small tight interference fit, so it'll look something like that. And then it comes with the collection of Allen bolts that you'll need in order to screw this in. And as you can see here, the idea is that it has a little bit of variability so you can move it left and right on this mounting face. We wanna make sure that you guys can adjust this and get it exactly where you want it. Now, if you don't know much about trigger position centers like this, you'll have a missing tooth. You can see the tooth missing right here. This is what this sensor over here is reading. So as your engine is spinning, it sees that missing tooth and then knows where your engine is in its cycle. And that's something that you can figure in your ECU. That tooth can be pretty much anywhere on the pulley face, but what I would recommend is once you have this on your pulley, like so, and you have your engine at top dead center, you get this sensor as close to matched up with that empty missing tooth while it's at top dead center. That'll prevent you from having to put a huge offset in your ECU and it makes things a little bit easier in the long run. So as you can see, our trigger wheel sits right up against the pulley, very flush and tight fit. The goal here again is to fit as many engines as we possibly can. So now that we have that installed, let's hop over to the engine. I'm gonna show you guys how to mount the trigger sensor itself so you can see that on an actual engine. All right, so here we have Bad Wolf's engine, and as you can see, it had a little oil leak. It's always around this pulley seal. I have tried every trick in the book to keep that from leaking, but alas, here we are, covered in oil. I'm using a slightly different configuration for my engine because of the turbocharged setup and my intercooler on the front, but let's go ahead and clean this up real quick so that we can get a better look at how this works. So with the power of magic, let's go ahead and do this. Wow, that is so cool. Man, I, if I have one recommendation for y'all is get yourself some movie magic because that is way easier than actually cleaning it by hand. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install the factory pulley here. All right, so with our factory pulley installed here, we can now install our trigger position sensor. So we take our sensor here and we line up the keyway on the back simply notch that into place to where it mounts up. Then we would take our factory pulley bolt here and we'll tighten that down into place. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that due to the inner diameter of this unit here, um, it does not support these original style bolts that go into your crankshaft. I don't personally like these that much anyway because they are incredibly short. Um, even for the factory pulley, it barely gets any teeth in there and I just, I don't love that. So I would strongly recommend if you are using this on an earlier engine, um, like a uh, early A series, not an A plus, um, picking yourself up an A plus style bolt. Um, it will work a lot better and it will fit this a lot better. Now this last part is where things can get a little tricky if the engine is in the car. In our setup, we use the factory bolts locations on your engine steady mount that also holds the bottom radiator. So you can see here, this is the lower bracket. This is what holds your engine in. This sits on your subframe and gets bolted in, but then also holds the radiator on top. When you are doing this, the easiest way to deal with this is to first support the bottom of your engine using a jack, just a little bit of pressure to lift off the weight on this engine mount, and then unbolt these bolts right here so that you can get the new bracket in that we're gonna be using for our trigger sensor. Now it's pretty straightforward. It matches the contour of this bracket right here to make it a little bit easier. And essentially you run your factory bolts right on through here. Now with that mounted in place, this is where we're gonna install our actual bracket for the trigger. This is pretty straightforward. 
it mounts straight through these bolts here. So we'll take these three, so we'll take these four bolts out. Now, the way I like to do this is to slightly loosen those up just like that. Leave those two in. And go ahead and set your bracket in place here. Don't tighten the smaller bolts just yet. We want those to remain loose. Now we don't want any of this to be super loose. They're super tight just yet, because what we're gonna do now is take our actual sensor and now we are going to set it in place. This will go into your bracket just like so. And it's going to space the sensor out the exact amount of space that you need in order for that sensor to operate properly. So you don't have to worry about that on this kit. Um, some of them will force you to uh, shim them, which can be kind of irritating if you have uh, ever worked with one of these kits before. But the main thing that you want, and jump over here, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. The main thing is that you want this bracket to perfectly align with the teeth themselves. There is a little metal diode on the end of your sensor here, and you want that perfectly centralized on your trigger wheel so that that is reading that missing tooth perfectly. And you can go ahead and tighten the big middle bolt on the lower bracket here. And then once you have that in the position that you like it, you can tighten all three of those tiny smaller bolts that allow it to be held in place properly. All right, and with that, you have your brand new trigger position sensor set up and installed. The rest is related specifically to the ECU that you're using. All of these kits are universal, so if your ECU supports a Hall Effect style sensor, this kit will work with it. Um, you can most likely retrofit a reluctor sensor if you really would like to on our kits, although the one that we include is a Hall Effect sensor. The way you can tell is that the Hall Effect sensor comes with a three-wire connector, whereas the reluctors are two wires. But that's pretty much it. That is how we install the Classic Mini DIY Trigger Position Sensor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is gonna wrap up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. I hope you guys found this helpful, and if you're interested in converting your car to a mappable ignition or an EFI-based system, head over to the Classic Mini DIY store. There's a link in my description where you can find all of the different EFI parts, as well as all of the huge lineup of performance parts that we now carry for the Classic Mini. If you have any questions about how this kit works, where you'd install it, why you'd want to use it, or anything else in between those, feel free to post those in the comment section below and I'll be happy to help you out. Also, if you don't know, I am in the middle of a big resto mod build on my Classic Mini, which is ironically sitting right over here on the right of me. If you want to see updates about that and the big project that's coming down the line with that, please check out the links in my description to that playlist. But that is gonna wrap things up pretty quick and short episode today, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until I see you on the next one, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on. See you later, guys.